Hello, my name is Jana Skokan. I'm the co-founder of Frogix. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining our Frogix YouTube channel today. If you like the content that we're sharing and the ideas that we're discussing, please like it, comment on it, and share it. And most importantly, come and join us on our live events. You have the opportunity to discuss with experts, exchange with like-minded people, and expand your perspectives all around topics related to sustainable building, sustainable living. And uh, I also want to encourage you to click the little notification bell, subscribe to our channel, and never ever miss another episode of Frog Week's Green Tech Talks in the future. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a great day. Why we are here today, and Lisa, it's a great pleasure to have you here from Sustainability uh, Canvas. Uh, it's a, also a company that is focusing on helping uh, small and medium businesses uh, putting together a sustainability framework about what you what they are doing. Now, you may think you are in sustainability, you work with such solutions, we are all good. Maybe uh, it's a uh, not always this way. Maybe we can also learn something more about where we have possibilities, where we have more potential. So this is also a big help. Aliza is going to share with us, uh, besides the, the approach, the, the methodology, how they do it, also a um, free tool, which is going to be distributed. It's going to be posted actually on social media uh, after this call, so you can download it for free. You can use it, complete it for yourself if you would need additional help. Elisa is always here. Uh, happy also to share we are partnering up. So Elisa is on a, also a part, a part, a par partner, part and partner of Frogix. So uh, definitely you will find also more around uh, for the sustainability within Frogix, and you will certainly hear and see more. And um, I encourage all of you joining today the, uh, the call, um, first of all, to network, engage. Uh, if you would like to um, raise a question, I would suggest to go through the presentation, go through the part, through the content that we want to deliver to you so you can really take something away, uh, park the questions and take them, uh, maybe uh, we're going to take them in the end, yeah, that we have a kind of uh, also some space for, for the discussion, for the exchange. Please connect also after the call or uh, whatever, LinkedIn, social media. It's a great network, super uh, people over here. I'm telling you already this, uh, that we are having in the community. So it's well worth to stay in touch and to exchange more on the topics. We're all, all on the same boat, all in sustainability. So a great, uh, a great exchange. And also I would like to encourage you, and that's the final word before I hand over to Lisa. Um, feel free to share the tool as well, because there are many more companies. Now you are here, you work in sustainability, you know about it. There are eventually people in your business network that start with either a business or are running it for several years and they have not really an idea about what's coming or are not really having the time invested into you know, developing their business concept further. So please share it with them so they can benefit from it and also make their business viable in the future. With this, I would hand over to you, Lisa. Would you like to take the lead? Sharing should be enabled, so the stage is yours. Sure, thanks so much, and uh, welcome everyone. It's nice to meet you. Um, so I'm connecting from Budapest, Hungary today, uh, but normally uh, we're based in the UK and, um, and Brazil, and kind of expanding now Hungary a little bit as well, since I've been, uh, that's my hometown. Um, I, uh, I'm going to jump straight into the presentation. So we'll go through a little bit about what we do with uh, the 4D Sustainability Canvas, how this idea emerged, who we are helping, and um, basically a little bit about the case studies as well. Um, I also brought some tips, um, what we, it's kind of like a conclusion for us um uh, from from the various workshop we held with SMEs what worked what didn't work in terms of uh, successful implementation of sustainability strategy so um I am going to share my screen and please let me know if you can see it works yeah perfect so Predominantly, the 4D Sustainability Canvas um, is based, is, was uh, created around the toolkit and the framework. 
uh, with the aim to help simple, uh, to, with the aim to help small and growing companies with simple and affordable solutions. Um, so I was wondering, Mom, if you you probably run your own startups, as I understand, and uh, small businesses. But um, when we uh, started, or when the idea um, the idea emerged around creating something affordable and accessible for uh, SMEs, we really look, looked into. Um, the importance of um, and role um, of the SMEs, small and medium-sized companies in the global economy. So as I don't know how much you're aware of the, some of the stats and it's been like, um, they vary um, based on different studies and, and depending on the different organizations, but um, or, overall we can tell that around um, so the SMEs employ around 70% 70 70 of the global workforce globally. This actually um, amounts to even higher in, in some countries. 90% um, or over 90% over of all firms are small or medium sized globally, which means um, that actually I think in the UK it's around 99% and in Brazil as well, including the informal workforce. Um, they have a um, they have a significant contribution to the global GDP as well in terms of obviously obviously um, their uh, backbone of, of local economies in uh, in almost all countries, but that all comes at cost on obviously on the environment. So um, this uh, stat is from the EU. But uh, they are also responsible for about 64% to, uh, of the environmental uh, negative environmental impact. So it is, um, you can see, I guess these numbers are really just to um, highlight that um, it is, we're talking about a massive uh, economic power that's been um, somehow overlooked when it came to sustainability, um, the sustainability narrative in general in the past years. Um, with the COVID and the pandemic, you could see that um, they got more into the spotlight, um, especially with the Build Back Better um, movements and campaigns. Um, and since they were struck the most <laughs> in, uh, they were struck the most in the past years, um, Yes, like um, I think around 30% of, of small companies went bankrupt. So um, be, because of the pandemic, so it's um, they are super vulnerable. Um, hence, it's super hard to find something um, that would encourage them to take on the sustainability, you know, this, this, to take them on the sustainability journey. Um, Here's just another, um, the prob from the problem side, uh, we know that um, these small companies uh, really lack um, the resources to, to, to efficiently implement sustainability strategy and, fr and frameworks or even goals and targets. So you may see that there are a lot of commitments around net zero at the moment. Um, and um, they do try to do, um, they do try to um, implement sustainability um, measures, but somehow sometimes um, it goes, maybe they don't address the most, you know, the most uh, impactful areas of their value chain, or they don't really address the most crucial uh, points. Um, so we wanted to find a solution for that. Um, so we were digging more into what are the barriers for the small companies on um, what are the barriers for them to, to set on this sustainability path? And um, maybe you can share this notion um, by running your own business or running, you know, or working with clients. But in general, it's, um, it's um, there is a gap in awareness. So uh, they might not completely understand what sustainability means or um, if, even if they do so, there is a little bit of a noise out there about uh, the existing sustainability solutions and frameworks, so they might not necessarily know uh, which, which direction to go and uh, which tool to use. Um, so that also is linked to um, the lack of expertise and skills 
um, to be able to implement sustainability solutions. So they most most of the time they would turn to consultants, but that's not not something that is necessarily affordable for um, for the bottom line, um, especially uh, during crisis, right? So um, on the other hand, small companies, and again depending on the size and the maturity of it, but um, since they are very um, they are very vulnerable. Um, time and money is scarce, so um, they might not have the same amount of time and resources to be able, able to, to implement new strategies. So they may think about something, but they would not uh, pursue uh, on their goals. So this is where we come into the picture, basically. So um, you, might, you may be aware of different standards, and Michael, you mentioned also the different reporting standards. Um, it's, um, it's a little bit too high level for them to jump into the, the, to that stage. So what we offer here in, with the 4D Canvas is that uh, we offer this toolkit for free and we also like offer workshops if they want to have some extra help with it. But um, the idea is um, to get them to this kind of base camp level where they understand their in overall impact and their priorities before they jump into any direction of whether it's a certification, the certification program, whether it's a, a standard or reporting framework, et cetera. So um, that, that's, that's been kind of gap for this, um, this uh, foundational level for them to reach to, um, you know, to understand um, what would be the best and most suitable dire direction for them to take. Um, and only then, um, only then it's, so it's more used, I mean, more efficient for them to choose a pathway afterwards. So in, in this uh, middle step, and then uh, that would lead to uh, more profound uh, integration of um, sustainability into their business model. Michael, did you have a question? I don't know if you raised your hand, but maybe I just misunderstood it. Okay, probably not. So um, the framework itself uh, consists of three steps. Um, we normally start with um, a mapping exercise across the four dimensions of community, employees, community, uh, governance, and planet. So those are the four Ds in the canvas. Um, and um, a carefully curated set of questions would guide um, the team, so we normally invite the whole team to, to run through the, these open questions. And those questions would guide them to, to brainstorm around specific um, actions or ideas on what the company can do in order to mitigate them. So this overall exercise, um, um, the intention of this overall exercise is to give the company a 360 overview of their impact. It's more of a, a co-creation and co-facilitation project than, um, than a one-on-one -on -one strategy, strategy consulting process. In the second uh, step, we um, introduce the UN Sustainable Development Goals because we think that um, the SDGs are the most um, I mean, that they are the most usable and efficient way to, to communicate the company's impact, but that needs to be done right as well. So we, we curated uh, or like created some um, cards that would help the uh, companies to, to be able to relate to the SDGs on, on their business level, because they are pretty high level if you just read it from the UN uh, website. So we translated the, the, the global goals into some um, business context and, um, and proposed some potential actions in order uh, for them to be able to contribute to the, to, to the goal. And then ultimately in order to make this whole um, framework and, and, and the process actionable and outcome oriented, we um, um, offer a target template where the companies can introduce um, their new goals and targets based on the canvas exercise. So I'm going to explain a little bit more how that works. So these are the four dimensions of the canvas. And as you can see in the middle, we normally start with an assessment of the value chain. 
and, um, and the stakeholders. So it's pretty much a high level um, assessment that um, just gives an understanding of what, uh, where the company's hotspots are in terms of impact. And uh, we do like an overall stakeholder analysis. Um, yes, for some companies, that's the first time actually when they, they see a bigger picture where they kind of, you know, where they are uh, situated in the system itself. Um, so uh, once we have filled in uh, the questions with the, with the post-its, then we normally move into the, the SDG cards. This is more of a educational, um, piece here so um, some companies for some companies this is the first time that they actually get acquainted with or, or they get um, uh, or they encounter the this the, the sustainable development goals so it's super important for them uh, to make it understand how they can work with the SDGs, how they can communicate the impacts through it. So the cars just really help the, to understand it and give them ideas on how they can map it, how they can map their actions against them. Um, I think Jana has a question. Or I don't know if you have a- Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, is there any possibility that, or um, to share some more concrete examples, how to fill in basically, or what um, a certain case company or uh, one of your former clients uh, would fill in just to have a better understanding um, how to complete it. Also for uh, the people today on the call, but also for yeah. people watching the replay so they just know how to fill in the tool. Sure, sure. I'm going to get there as well. Um, I'm going to show the live example of um, of a workshop that I uh, that is part of this presentation. Great. But um, um, overall, we have a very detailed guide on the website. So when you go to the download part, there is a subsection which is the how to section. Uh, where you have like a step-by-step -step process that explains everything on, you know, how what what to pay attention on and um, and how to fill the canvas in. Um, and we are also always, um, um, you know, we are always here to help in in case uh, you are stuck or have questions. Um, some companies do it themselves. Some companies need the facilitation around it because uh, they're. It, mm -hmm. depend, it depends on the level of knowledge of the person. We also work with a set of uh, licensed pa license partners uh, who you mm -hmm. can also turn to in case um, you would need, um, you know, need that kind of help. But I'm going to I'm going to um, show some examples. Perfect. Um, so that's just um, and just quickly showing in a bigger format. They uh, these are the basically if you go to the website, you download these three toolkit so the canvas the cards and the target template um, the target template um, is um, is a little bit it's broken down to further uh, fields um, when we do the actual workshop but this gives a general idea how to you know what to measure and what are the different areas uh, it's like a, setting smart goals for the company so they would be measurable and actionable. Um, we always assign an owner and this, be, this way it, be, it becomes a very distributed process because we know that in a small company would you don't really have um, the resource to maybe, I don't know, to hire a sustainability manager or uh, so it has to be a very um, uh, distributed process. Uh, so everyone takes part and role in the transition. And it's very important that we always remind them about the business advantage that certain goal and target would bring them. It's not necessarily monetized at the moment, but um, at least just a reminder what that uh, certain measure, say, bringing diversity or uh, into the company or setting diversity targets. Uh, as well as uh, measuring the carbon footprint. So what those kind of actions can bring to them long-term as benefit. So that's a um, snapshot of, a, um, of the actual um, uh, workshop. So we normally hold it in, in, um, in Miro. It's a, it's a virtual whiteboard. 
um, that is shared with the team. As I mentioned, it is a very um, teamwork. So it's, uh, we focus on the involvement of, of as many people uh, as possible from the company. So then it becomes, um, as I mentioned, like a co-creation as opposed to, to a top-down um, um, goal setting or uh, KPI setting for the team. So they really become part of the solution, not just being instructed. So um, um, in terms of like um, examples of specific, um, um, the, the uh, specific actions, I would probably need to go back to that after the presentation to show you an exact, um, uh, exa like an exact um, um, board in, in Miro. So I would need to open it for that, but basically, um, and there are so the, there is no single answer uh, to the to the questions. They are all open questions, and the idea is that um, obviously you can can have questions. For example, in the community section, uh, like how they ensure that uh, the the development empowerment of the local community, or questions around um, how they make sure that the impact they're making is there. Um, so basically a bit of guiding towards how they measure the impact and how do they make sure it's happening. So those kind of questions would lead to answers like they would need to implement sustainability uh, impact measurement plan or, um, or frameworks. Uh, they, would, they could include um, a revision of their purchase strategy when it comes to local um, economy development. So uh, how how, what is the percentage of, of the purchase goods that comes from a local source? Um, and that applies to, to services as well. So those kind of questions. So it's a really long process, actually. Uh, we um, go through the canvas itself because it has, as you can see on the here on the right, so this, these are the questions. Um, they, this takes around at least a one hour just to go through the four dimensions. Sometimes we had to spend even more time, especially when it's a startup where there's a lot of things are not in place. So it's all about brainstorming what they could do. Um, so that, um, I don't know if that's enough for now as an example, or um, we can, you know, we can, uh, return to that and see if you would like to see more as well. Um, the canvas itself has been uh, translated into three languages, um, Spanish, uh, Portuguese. So we started the project in Brazil. So that's why the, the website is translated to Portuguese and, and the canvas itself as well. And, um, and uh, it's been recently translated to Spanish. And now we're uh, looking to have uh, translations to Hungarian and Arabic as well, as there were some interest from those countries too. Um, and yeah, and we're open always for more contributors too, if you would like to have it in German or um, obviously it would be nice to have it um, available in as many countries as possible because uh, it's also part of that inclusion, right? So how to make it accessible to all nations. Um, well, our, oh, sorry, Jana. Uh, you are raising your hand. <laughs> yes, I, I do have a lot of questions. So when uh, you go through the process, uh, you mentioned the 17 SDG goals. So how do you go about them? Do you go uh, question by question, area by area, or how do you assess it? For example, we have uh, a company uh, that is dealing with water management solution or um, yeah, water management, yeah. let's take this one. So yeah, which areas would we look at? Shall we go through all when we are doing this canvas or shall I look at just whatever, you know? Yeah, what, so yeah. that's a good, uh, it's a really good question. When it comes to the SDGs, we go from <clears throat> like from um, macro perspective as well. So we try to <clears throat> research the industries 
uh, relevant SDGs. Uh, so you can have, you can find some resources about it. And um, so we normally hold a, a workshop, uh, an open workshop every month where you can join. And there we go into detail how we do that. So um, I, we don't, I don't really have time to, to, to go deep into that. But um, in the workshop, we basically show the different uh, resources where we get uh, the data or the information about this, that sector. So obviously we need to understand um, uh, those um, uh, those indicators, and then what we do is basically we or we I we link the SDGs backwards. So we set the goals and targets first, and then we use the GRI uh, mapping uh, with uh, against the SDGs backwards. So we set the goal first. Does this make sense? Okay. Good. And um, uh, this open workshop that you mentioned, is this, I mean, open indicates it's an open thing that everybody can join or, or how is, what's the structure over there? What's yes. The so um, we're going to launch it this, uh, I mean, it's uh, also on our website. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's open in terms of um, it's not, it's, um, it shows the, the methodology in detail. So we go, which is so in, in Miro. So we do the, the whole process in three hours using a case study. Okay. So we go through that. So it's um it's basically for either either business owners who would like to take it back to their organization and, and do the workshop themselves. Or um or as I mentioned, we work with partners or the sustainability experts or facilitators who would like to learn the methodology in more detail. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can share this also in the follow-up. Sure thing. Yes, I wish I will send the link and the um, and the date as well. Mm -hmm. Because that we can imagine can be helpful. I mean, if you have also maybe yes. a lender the or next such one, event. Mm -hmm. The next one will be in the end of March. So um, yeah, the third week around the third week of March. And there is a, it's also also possible uh, to a bigger a group of people to join and basically go through the case study. Yes. 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 So exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, so going for further, um, I need to wrap up soon. Uh, but um, basically, the idea was uh, our main principles is that we wanted to create something collaborative, simplified, and outcome oriented, and that's been uh, um, uh, underlined um, by the feedbacks we received of the, the workshop. So we also measure our impact and we measure the success rates of the of this methodology. So here you just can see some of the of the testimonials that um, the companies left. Um, and in general, since uh, Jana asked for some some tips uh, for um, that, this one is based on. The, our experience. Um, when when do we think that the that the transition to sustainability can be successful at a small company level? Um, is basically I, I brought some some principles that that I think work, um, and one of them is um, authentic leadership. So even though we co talk about co creation and kind of like a bottom-up approach where we listen to the ideas of the employees. Um, there should be a central vision that comes from the top uh, that is, um, you know, a strong conviction that uh, the company really wants to go on this journey. And it's not uh, a merely a tick of the box exercise uh, for them. Um, then, as I mentioned, the co-creation part. So there are a number of studies that, um, uh, support that uh, in, inviting a team to be active participants and, and, and agents of the change will make the implementation part more success, successful. Um, the integration, so with the target template, we're trying to make this a part of the business's um, everyday operation and activity. So uh, by integration, I mean that sustainability that, that having the sustainability uh, lenses on every decision making or reporting uh, re remuneration of the staff, um, it all should be kind of part of it as well. Um, using SDGs, as I mentioned, it's an effective uh, and efficient way to, to communicate uh, the impact. 
um, without, um, but with like profound understanding of them, not just like some companies are really using SDGs in, a, in, you know, in, in random ways, but um, it's really important to, um, to use them well. And when they are used well, it's just, I've, we find that it's a really eff efficient way to communicate the impact. Um, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, the small companies have this barrier of uh, being uh, resource and time uh, scarce. So um, it's really important to emphasize that they can start with small steps and that will create the momentum in long term. So our idea here is that we set around seven to nine goals and targets after the workshop that they can start work within the next 12 months. And they, they are the ones that they are feasible to do. And um, in that kind of 12 months timeframe are, can bring some you know, sense of, uh, of success already, uh, which will <clears throat> need to be always uh, celebrated as well. So it comes back to a little bit to um, any behavior change uh, you know, theory as well. Uh, when it comes to implementing something with gradual and small steps. Um, being transparent, um, so we encourage uh, the companies to engage on their stakeholders and bring them bring them to with their on their journey. So uh, and also be able to communicate um, their progress on a regular in a regular base on a regular regular basis. So um, that could be done either through newsletters, so you do not have to have a very um, sophisticated uh, method for it. It can be done uh, whichever way, but just to be consistent around it. And um, action over perfection. So um, some companies, you can see that they don't start because they are not say they don't feel like uh, they're, they um, know everything and I don't think anyone knows everything in that mm -hmm. field so even us in, in the sustainability field you need, you need to be really up to date with um, all the innovations and, and the new studies and, uh, and regulations coming out so it's an ever-evolving field I don't think we will ever know the best answer but that should be embraced uh, and, and, uh, and, and also communicated that this is the best way within the means we have now to do. And it's better than doing something than nothing. Um, I just want to close off a little bit about in general about what we do. So as I mentioned, we uh, hold workshops uh, on the private, uh, private ones. And we also um, offer monthly open workshops. Um, you will receive this uh, <coughs> handout and slide deck so you can uh, have the access to the free download, but you can also do it from the website directly. Uh, otherwise, we work with uh, licensed partners um, from, from different countries, so um, Europe, um, the US uh, recently uh, joined someone from Saudi Arabia as well. So it's, uh, it's a growing network of sustainability um, sustainability champions, uh, whether they are sustainability experts or coaches um, who are who would like to use our methodology in, in their work. Um, and we also offer general consulting on sustainability reporting, impact measurement, and, and other advice. Yes, Jana? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so uh, I would just uh, quickly go back to the, to the previous uh, slide that you had on. Uh, mm -hmm. regarding uh, these elements and um, it's great that you are mentioning it in terms of also you know because mapping the is or the relevance of your actions of your production of the your business activity that you have uh, towards uh, the SDGs brings you into that position that you are able to communicate clearly what you do that has why it matters and why it's a good choice for the customers for you for for them but also for you you know, what you are adding in terms of sustainability goals and the whole the whole challenge that we are in. So uh, it's also a little bit of a marketing and communication benefit for you that you can utilize uh, on social media, various social media, because we all uh, uh, hear and feel it more and more uh, we go that the topic is getting more present uh, and also the need, the, the real need yes, let's do something, yes, let's prefer uh, really the solutions that make a difference, that are really uh, bringing the, the, the results. So this is one thing. 
clarity and marketing. That's why it's very good to just, you know, go through the tool, do the exercise, spend on that few few minutes to think about those questions to just sort, you know, and clarify uh, your, your journey and your approach. And I would be very curious to hear about some of uh, you, uh, of, of our participants today. Uh, many of you are business owners or, or leaders in, in your segment. Uh, do you have such clarity? Of course, you have a strategy. Of course, I mean, once you started with a, with a company, you have a set of, of goals that you work towards to, but do you have a clear strategy? And, you know, how much uh, does, uh, does the topic uh, today resonates with you? And, okay, well, there is potential, you know, to do something or what, what is your perspective on that? I would just like to hear some of yours. Maybe, maybe there would be a point to go through at, at a later stage. And um, why I also say it, uh, um, and that's connected to you, uh, Lisa, uh, when going through this process, is there also any, or have you seen it? I mean, I have been part of some workshops of yours where I saw, you know, what was the result of a company or how they changed their, their actions. And it was amazing. So do you uncover also gaps in the production or in the processes where um, companies can stumble across basically, okay, well, that's a, this is an element which is eventually a risk area for us in the future. We should look at it, look for, I mean, you mentioned purchase processes and how much is local, what is the supply chain, a big strong topic when we look at the emissions, scopes of emissions, Michael is in data. Uh, we know how much, uh, you know, is it going to be important uh, the, the further we go. With the, with the coming regulations. So do you have chance to also discover this in the discussions during the questions? And yes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, as I, so when I showed the four dimensions, we have a planet, the fourth one, uh, which covers all this kind of questions that are um, related to carbon, like greenhouse gas, green, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, circular <clears throat> design, circularity, waste management, energy management, etc. So we do cover all those questions and they may, I mean, they do <laughs> reveal the gaps. So basically these are gap analysis, um, but um, as opposed to just a net zero um, like questionnaire or journey, we actually go through like the, the triple bottom line. So, no, so it's, it's more holistic sustainability assessment. Um, we do not um, necessarily take on the implementation part, but we can refer them to, um, to consultancies and different solutions if they, they wish so. Mm -hmm. One maybe last point why I also asked specifically about this, Herman, before it's your turn with your question. Um, uh, is um, recently I came across also um, an interesting input. Uh, was it was a great company, new company startup. They developed uh, a building uh, element made out of recycled plastic. Now you may seem, or you may think, oh wow, amazing innovation! Let's do it, and and everybody and everywhere, and you know how good it's going to be. But the challenge was, I mean, there was a potentially such type of analysis missing of the whole process because um, it was a little bit twisted. The problem was with the, with the material, uh, besides the fact that you re reuse it, you use recycled material, you save resources, you have a challenge with the microplastics that are being released during the use, which is another challenge. So once you, know, um, you do this analysis in a, as whenever you get to it, it's a, whether it's an early stage, you're in a startup phase, or you are, you know, running the company for 10 years, mm -hmm. and you just want to do it, because you want to flesh out, you know, the risks areas, or, you know, just the supply chain to have the full understanding. It's a benefit, because in the end, you're going to be prepared either for what you need to change in the production, what you need to adjust, or, you know, what may be a risk element for future communications, marketing, you have all this greenwashing, uh, challenge that is coming upon everybody that is working and with any type of sustainability, whether it's frog geeks, whether it's, you know, whatever type of organization, basically everybody will be challenged on how much really the value is at some point. So we need to be aware also about this and uh, approach it transparently. So that was my, my message. And sorry, now thank hand you. over to you, Herman. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, 
I'm very interesting uh, to do uh, this kind of uh, uh, canvas uh, because uh, I'm very interested to see uh, how many uh, SDGs uh, I can achieve in this kind of goals because what you also mentioned uh, for the marketing is that uh, very interesting and very important to let's see how green uh, your product is. So it's very yeah. interesting. Cases. Yeah, lovely. I mean, yeah, it just feel free to get in touch with uh, with me after even after this session, and then we can have like a um, an intro call and discuss how we can best support you in that. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I bet it's gonna be a lot, Herman. You have a huge. Uh, <laughs> so I, I I already I was already thinking actually about it because uh, it's really the the connections. But yeah. You can eventually also leverage other elements. Is there any other question in the round before we continue? So let's let's continue. I would say. Okay. So um, I I will jump into. I don't know if you're interested in just a breakdown of or the outline of the workshops. The normally how they they look like. If we you do it privately with us, so it all. It's all done um, um, through Zoom uh, online. Um, and we normally split it into two days because it's quite a lot of information for a company to, to digest on, in one day. Um, so here you can see more or less uh, the division of the topics. Um, um, we start with uh, stakeholder mapping, value chain analysis, and go through the Canvas exercise. And the next day, only the next day, we introduce the SDGs. Um, depending on the level of knowledge of the company, we can dig, dig that deeper into the general understanding of them. Some, some of them are already aware of them. So we just jump into the, the exercises. We do a quick materiality analysis. So based on the, uh, what's most material to that company, and that's where um, the value chain comes into the, um, into the picture as well. Uh, we choose the, the priority goals for the company. But considering time and money, because we know that they are small, so uh, they will probably not be able to do the biggest investments in the beginning or upfront. Um, yes, and we do, do offer as part of this workshop follow up sessions where we can review the targets and the goals um, in six and 12 months. Um, Lisa, just maybe a quick question mm -hmm. Is this a paid uh, format or uh, basically for, from your uh, consulting company? Is this correct? Yes, so yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. And uh, does the company need, uh, which is going into such a review with you, a preparation? What should they bring with them? Well, uh, we normally suggest them to go through the questions, understand a little bit their own value chain. So we do it together on the session, but if they can come prepared with the activities they're involved in, um, it's always better. Um, and, and going through the questions just to have some ideas already like hovering around and uh, sleep on it maybe, you know, because some, some of the questions, it's like a pretty uh, or high level overview of your sustainability approach, but it's, um, you can always go very, you know, deep into those questions and can have second round, et cetera. So that's one thing. And also if they, depending on the level of the knowledge of SDGs, we, we may send some uh, materials on reading, you know, to read through those. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So these are some um, just examples of the companies we worked with. Um, all of them, these are all almost all startups and um, sorry, um, UK, one is based in UK, the other, no, two of them were based in the UK and one is in Portugal. Um, so basically, and you can see here that one of them is uh, more like a social kind of global media platform. Um, we defined um, we defined nine sustainability goals for them. You can see and see some examples. So goals around responsible sourcing, diversity and inclusion, and data transparency. Since they are, are like a, um, they use a lot of um, private data. Um, that was important also to, to handle that um, properly um, and also how to communicate their impact in the best way. Um, then the second example is a peer-to-peer -peer, um, platform um, 
that sells uh, secondhand surf equipment in Portugal. This is a really pretty big business in Portugal and um, there's not many platforms like this, but these guys were really keen to take on a more bigger role being, um, you know, emphasizing um, the circularity and the circular, um, um, circular economy, uh, economy within the surf industry. Um, and also taking on some kind of advocacy role on sustainable oceans and communities, supporting local communities. <clears throat> that is a big struggle at the moment in Portugal because of the economic downturn. So um, we set seven sustainability goals with them. And some examples are like uh, how they can um, um, uh, enforce local community collaborations, uh, and also impact measurements, so measuring the, the amount of CO2 they, uh, or, um, they, um, they save through you know, selling uh, this new surfboard as, as opposed to a new one, etc. So all those things are being implemented still. Um, they're going slower because they're also looking for funding, but um, it was a really good session. And then the third example is an agri-tech agri startup. <clears throat> that brings uh, satellite data to remote uh, farmers um, in Africa and then in, the, in, in Europe as well. And um, so they are a very mission oriented company already, but they wanted to understand how they can make this, uh, how they can serve their beneficiaries in the best way. And, um, and a little bit understand how they can make the operation itself greener. So um, and that includes all the um, the the tools it sounds th themselves what they do with the with the used uh, sensors etc. So we went through the the whole process of um, both services and products. So these these are just some of the case studies that we can also find again on our homepage. As I mentioned, uh, I, we work with uh, partners and. Uh, and here you can see some of our clients. So we work with um, a business school in board Portugal. They also, and that's the academic part of it. So we, the, it's being taught in a sustainability uh, course, in my course, you know, my sustainability course um, at Ischgete Business School. Um, so we are really in close contact with the sustainability department there. Uh, because it's a good way to engage the students as well in these whole discussions in a in a very part participatory and visual way. Um, and, um, and you can see some of these, uh, some of our partner organizations <clears throat> like uh, Profit Impact from the UK, uh, you know, who specializes on pro professional services and uh, accountancies uh, and the Brazilian Association of uh, Sustainability Experts Sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Um, or uh, Hydra Societa, which is an uh, is Italian sustainability consultancy as well. Oh, and the Sustainable Spa Association, uh, which is growing really big at the moment. So they're using the canvas for and the framework as part of their certification process for sustainable spas. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. And it's, um, so it's a growing global community in the hospitality. Um, and a little bit about us. So this is me. Yeah, you will find my details uh, as part of this, uh, the handout material. So you can reach uh, me uh, on the, on the, through the email uh, or LinkedIn. Um, I will share my LinkedIn um, Ringing in profile as well, so feel free to connect with me there. And uh, Luis is the other co-founder who is based in Brazil. Um, he at the moment is busy with uh, online training course creation. So we recently launched an online training uh, in, in Brazil, in, in Portuguese. And we are soon onboarding a third co-founder from the UK that will be hopefully updated here as well. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Jana, I think you have, uh, you have your hand raised. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, we have like uh, 10 more minutes. So I, I just uh, wanted to quickly uh, run a quick poll uh, regarding uh, the, the topic which we discussed today. So uh, I would like to ask you, uh, who of you just raise your hand and that's it. Uh, nothing else is needed. Who of you has uh, mapped out uh, sustainability in such a manner before, linked it to uh, SDGs? If you raise your hand, it's a yes. 
If you don't raise your hand, it's a no. Good. So thank you, thank you so much. I mean, uh, we have definitely some people that, that have done it already, which is great. So Michael, maybe you can share with us as, as you uh, have been raising your hand. Uh, what was your experience? I mean, what was the approach you had on it? Um, what was maybe different from you know what you heard today? And um, yeah, maybe you can share with us your experience. What, what where did it brought you to do it at all? Um, okay, so we actually created uh, some sort of a sustainability readiness index uh, for free users of our platform to mm -hmm. actually help them to better uh, to get have a you know to educate and to help them uh have a early start in understanding what sustainability is because so far a lot of companies in Asia still struggle to understand what uh sustainability is. Mm -hmm. They still ask us questions like, how do you define sustainability and all this stuff? So it was a huge shock for us because, you know, with so many, you know, uh, market, I mean, so many interests of it, the knowledge and the depth of knowledge among uh, both consumers and businesses is still, still lacking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when now where a lot of the jobs that is being provided in Singapore are in the sustainability sector. In fact, now I think the government is moving towards uh, the educational uh, or more like the work training programs to cater to sustainability uh, frameworks and understanding. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that we should, um, you know, should not just uh, limit sustainability education in, this, in a university context because yes, the universities have done well in providing courses and degrees and certifications in this area, but let's acknowledge that not every uh, not every professional want to have the time nor the uh, resources to go through all of it. So um, so when we build, uh, when we try to educate or I should say our consumers on what sustainability is, the SDGs actually help because one is uh, internationally recognized. Uh, secondly, it's, it's much more simpler. It's not uh, like GRI or other frameworks where we require some sophisticated in-depth knowledge into sustainability. So it was, uh, but our hopes is that we can work with more uh, partners out there to actually, um, edu especially educational partners, where actually provide uh, you know, programs and frameworks on our platform because you know I don't believe that we should lack um, we should uh, allow like if, uh, diversity of uh, understanding of what sustainability is rather than just limit it to a few frameworks. Interesting point. Interesting point that you, that you uh, bring up. Is there, and thanks a lot, Michael, for sharing your uh, perspective, your experience, and also what you see is happening in Singapore. Great, uh, great point. Uh, any uh, other a uh, person or business owner that would like to share their their experience in terms of setting their goals or or business activities being related to sdgs ashari i just yeah i just want to chime in uh, i came from singapore too you know but then again uh we are still in the i guess you know moving towards it but uh, a lot of courses up there you know uh Right, because uh, it's an in thing, right? Uh, it says that whether you want to go for it or not. Uh, I, in 2019, I, I, I joined with the government, you know, we do a lot of sensitivity work on the ground. The only problem is <clears throat> things don't work out because people do not really want to have the nudge, you know. Society in Singapore is very different because Michael uh, maybe don't agree with me. But because we live in a very vertical world, you know, flats, you know, apartment, and that certain bring a lot of challenges for the government, you know, <clears throat> and uh, bearing in mind, you think of work in progress because far more, everything just start up because in 2019, I remember, <clears throat> I thought uh, such a business issue, but no, it's up to COP26, but until now, still, I have an operation in Malaysia, Indonesia, you know, and I, I can tell you, most of them that don't know what is sustainability is all about. The problem is, the problem is, think is more on the European side of things. You know, the funding or that come here. Yeah? We have this uh, Commonwealth 
country, Ireland, that we go, we have thinking Ireland that we want to go to UN, start suing everybody, you know, who who to be blamed. But then again, where the funding come? I just have a few meeting these few days. We talk about all the tech, rice farming or that. But when asked this question, or the same thing remains, you know, where are the farmers going to get the money from? Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? We talk about all this funding, so many things, you know, but on the European side, I live in Europe for 20 years. I can understand that, you know. But what about the Asian guy? <laughs> where, we, where, the, where the people in Indonesia, the farmers in Indonesia, I run the sustainability program in Indonesia, you know. We, we, we build bio, biodiesel or that, but on the cheap. But out of blue, you go after, like, late in the day, this guy will say, oh, we got two, three million, 40 million funding or that, you know. But it doesn't come to us, you know, the farmers that really need it, you know. In which I got two programs running, you know, for sustainability farmers giving their small, you know, finance or that. Right? We got a rice, rice with all this aerodone, whatever drone you talk about. This farmer doesn't know any drone, you know, mm -hmm. but they are the most affected. <laughs> My question is, my question is, all of this tech is all on the Western side of the world. But, it's a, but, interesting point that you make, uh, Ashari. Interesting point that you make. It's it's yeah. a very, very, if I may add, it's a very uh, huge consider, it was a huge consideration for us as well, Ashari. So um, you have a great point, like who we are here on, <laughs> on the kind of privileged West or like from Europe, um, you know, preaching about sustainability and you know, for other sides of the world where you know some people don't meet meet and you know their ends mean so it's um it's a really tough question but having worked in in brazil in um with marginalized communities as well myself i can see that it's also it ties back to a mindset change uh, and what you are mentioning about where the money is coming from i guess it's a little bit of a question of you know, of on policy policy level, policy making level as well. Like, what what does the government subsidize? Because it's being subsidized now as well, farming in every country. But the question is, what are we, you know, where are we putting the money in, in in you know, traditional agriculture, or we are we going to shift towards something uh, more sustainable, regenerative? Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, very um, interesting. We had uh, recently also a webinar on agritech uh, within uh, the Frog Geeks Green Tech Talk series of Ashari. It would have been eventually a very good um, event for you, but you can certainly watch it in the replay, uh, and uh, it will be available soon. The point is, um, we had uh, the the presenter Savina Solanki. She's um, also a tech startup founder, uh, mm -hmm. agritech startup founder, and. Um, uh, my apologies, biotech uh, startup in India. And uh, coincidentally, on that day when we were having the webinar, the Indian government announced sub uh, large subsidy uh, programs for farming uh, to turn to regenerative agriculture. So it's a, it's a great signal, uh, you know, um, but there, I mean, uh, it's, it's just such a complex topic with so many solutions, but they all somehow fit together. So um i still like to keep it uh, positive and um not basically uh only looking at one uh, source of yeah that's the ultimate truth we're gonna do this and it's gonna help everybody because we have different conditions we have different ecosystems and we need to just uh, apply what is best suitable for 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 the country and apparently the goal for the country is to be sufficient in their food so that you know it's it's enough to provide uh, healthy, uh, high uh, nutritious uh, or high uh, nutrition, uh, high quality nutritious food for the population. And apparently that the farmers also have the economic benefit of it. And, uh, you know, that this community can thrive uh, within this uh, framework. So it's, it's a big challenge. I mean, every area that we have, uh, and that's also why uh, Frogix is set up in the matter that it is. That's why we have such a diverse audience also today from different segments. 
uh, from data to uh, coatings to water energy because it's also interconnected and that's why we also uh, are building this place where everybody can meet they can exchange and also understand the impacts of each other and leverage the collaboration leverage the ideas the potential which is there fully so that's that's the whole scope and that's why i also encourage you to to exchange more and connect more and join also other calls because as, as you see the the topics are uh returning water is basically everywhere so when you see it it's just really flowing through every every topic in the matter whether we have data and cooling and data centers and we're going to have sessions all, all around this as well i encourage you to join and to just chip in your perspective and connect with people in this network so it's it's really uh it's really a great um place to do so <laughs>